I should get this finished. What are you doing with that? Yeah, I'm doing with this. I got powered up. For my first luxury starter watch, I wanted something classic. A daily driver, something that would introduce me to the world of watches with a bang. But also something that had quality of craftsmanship, a strong degree of understated elegance, and something that I really enjoy and have for a long time, quiet luxury. Thank you, Kendall Roy. Seems to be all the rage these days. Laura Piana may not make watches, but IWC, does. It's far more understated than a Rolex or many other Swiss brands for that matter, but it holds its own in terms of history and tradition, technical features, and you got it, quiet luxury. But still, many people don't consider these watches mainstream. I followed IWC for almost a decade now. That's right, I've been looking at these watches since at least 2015. It's just taken me a while to pull the trigger. They've always caught my eye for the simple elegance, their clean design, and their rich history. They were made for World War II fighter pilots, after all, uh, and they even have a long history that even predates that. And for me personally, a big part of buying a luxury timepiece like this, at least to start, is legacy. Of course, I love having a beautiful timepiece on my wrist every single day, but knowing that my son may one day take it off my hands, as he has said he would. That makes me really happy, even if he doesn't wear it all the time, but just so that he has it there to remember me by. In this video, I wanna talk about why I chose IWC and the 41 millimeter chronograph in particular. We'll start with the rich history and tradition, specifically of the IWC Pilot watches, before moving to this particular watch's technical features, its design, what I like and don't like about it, and then finishing with this brand, IWC's Quiet Luxury. So without further ado, let's get started. One thing that I absolutely love about IWC's rich history is that it's actually American in origin. The American watchmaking pioneer, Florentine Ariosto Jones, started the company. He actually embarked on the reverse American dream, starting the International Watch Company in Schaffhausen, Switzerland, which is in the German-speaking part of the country. He drew on some of the best Swiss watchmakers at the time, relied on modern technology, and also hydropower from the Rhine River, which flowed right near the factory. All of that combined to allow him to manufacture watch movements of the highest professional quality and grade. That was some 150 years ago. And yet not many people really talk about IWC when they think of some of the greatest Swiss watches. In 1936, the brand's first pilot watch came on the scene. It was called the Special Pilot's Watch. It featured a rotating bezel with an arrowhead index and it was fitted, which was fairly novel at the time, with an anti-magnetic encasement. Later on, the Mark 11, which is one of the most famous and classic pilot watches, it was commissioned for the RAF, the Royal Air Force. It wasn't until the brand was bought by Richemont that they started making fully in-house movements. And with over a century of watchmaking excellence across a wide variety of styles, it's hard to find too much to fault with IWC. Now let's talk about my watch specifically. The IWC Pilot Chronograph 41 millimeter reference number IW388113. It's in a stainless steel case, 41 millimeters in diameter. The thickness is a bit high for some people's liking. It's 14.5 millimeters in height. It actually doesn't wear as thick and as big as it sounds. It's not too overbearing on the wrist, although if you do have a smaller wrist size, it might potentially overpower your wrist. So do keep that in mind, but honestly, I love the way it wears. There's a screw in crown that allows you to pop it out by twirling it down, powering up the watch on the first setting, pull it out another time, and you're able to adjust the day of the week and the date, pull it out a third time, and you're able to adjust the time. And then of course, with the chronograph, you have your stop, start, and reset features on the side of the watch. One of my favorite features on this particular model of the Pilot Chronograph is the open case back. 
where I can see the movement working in real time. For anyone who loves quality craftsmanship and beauty and design, there's almost nothing you can fault with this open case back. It's truly amazing to be able to look inside and see all the tiny parts working together to keep the watch functioning. Through that sapphire glass case back, you can see the IWC manufactured movement. It's a 69385 caliber movement made up of 242 different components. The dial is also evocative of the historical model's utilitarian simplicity which has always spoken to me. The dial itself sports large, luminous Arabic numerals, sword hands, and the hallmark inverted orientation triangle at 12 o'clock. The chronograph subdials are elegantly displayed with minutes, seconds, and hours, perfect for easily timing something. The integrated EZX exchange system allows the strap to be changed in no time at all. Also available are calf skin or rubber straps in various colors. I was able to get a leather calfskin strap in black, which I think wears really well, especially uh, for more formal occasions. But to be quite honest, the bracelet also looks great in formal wear. And overall, I, I think it's my favorite way to wear the watch. It's just the most versatile. And it's also more cost effective, in my opinion, to buy it originally with the bracelet and to later on purchase the calfskin leather strap, if you'd also like to add that to the collection. I just love the we do. simplicity of design here, to run the, the different features and functionality, and the overall beauty of this timepiece. Next, let's talk about the quiet luxury of this watch. So like I said before, this may not be a mainstream brand like Rolex. IWC is not going to roll off the tip of the tongue for your average person walking down the street. Everybody knows Rolex. You don't have to be in watches to know that brand. But IWC, it's more of a, if you know, you know, type brand. And most watch enthusiasts will look approvingly in my experience so far. And granted, I'm newer to this game and to this world, but almost anyone that I s speak to that knows about watches, they always, speak about IWC with the utmost respect. Even if someone is not a watch enthusiast, if they see this watch on your wrist, walking down the street, it looks really nice. They won't need to know any background to know that it's a nice timepiece. In addition to it being too thick, some people might say that it's just too gaudy, too big, lug to lug, but depending on your wrist size, of course, I mean, I have a fairly average size wrist. This watch wears perfectly on my wrist. Also, I love the versatility of this. The watch easily changes out for different straps and you don't need a tool or anything to change out the straps. And it almost is like wearing a totally different watch when you put this on a leather bracelet. That added versatility is really nice. Finally, I want to talk to you about this brand's outstanding customer service. I visited two IWC boutiques when I was looking to purchase this watch and each experience was excellent. First boutique I tried was in London at the Battersea Power Station. I also made a separate video on that experience because it was so interesting shopping inside of an old power station in London, which they had converted into a full mall. But the salesperson there couldn't have been better. He went out of his way to help me, even though it was unclear whether or not I was actually going to purchase something. My experience in New York was just as good, if not better. Michael Brown, as I mentioned, was a salesperson who helped me. And the first watch I purchased from him was actually defective, although that was no fault of his own. And certainly nobody's fault inside the shop. It had just been a defective watch that was sent from Switzerland. I don't know if it had been used as a display maybe, or if the movement itself just was shot to begin with. The chronograph wasn't working properly. It would get to one minute on the chronograph, but then it would never go past that one minute mark. I brought it in, and at first they were skeptical of whether there was anything problematic about the watch, but Michael, once he got it in his hands, was very quick to bring it up to the watchmaker that they have on site. He took one look at it, apparently, uh, and Michael was back in about 10 minutes to me, saying that they were going to do whatever it took to get me a new watch as quickly as possible, and that's exactly what they did. They sent in a watch from Switzerland, 
They even gave me some high WC racing gloves because we talked about Formula One and motorsports uh, while I was purchasing this watch. So that was really nice. They went above and beyond to try to make it right. And the watch that I ultimately ended up receiving the second time was perfect. The chronograph works great. The movement is crisp and smooth and I haven't had a single issue with this watch. So in the end, the IWC Pilot Chronograph is a no-nonsense, highly legible, sleek, clean, and beautiful watch of understated luxury. And IWC isn't even paying me to say that. I wish they were. In fact, I paid them quite a bit. But honestly, I don't regret one second of it or one penny. I'm curious though, what are your favorite luxury starter watches? And what do you think about IWC? As somebody who is newer to the watch game, having purchased my very first starter watch, which I guess depends on how you define starter watch. But I'd be curious to know what you think is a great way to start off a watch collection, what some of your favorite luxury timepieces are, and your overall thoughts on IWC and the Pilot watches in particular. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for listening, and if you're in the market for a good watch, I hope this has helped. Or if you're just curious about the IWC brand, given that it doesn't get, in my opinion, the airtime that it should, I hope this has uh, helped add some perspective. So take care, cheers, see you on the next one. You wanna open it? Yeah. Open the package, what's inside? <laughs>